Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another audio programming tutorial for beginners. And today we're going to talk about the sine wave. Now, if any of you, as I'm sure some of you um, that are listening to this, uh, have uh, any sort of experience with any sort of th synthesizer, you're probably aware that there are many different types of waves. My voice is a wave. You have square waves, triangle waves, pulse waves, all different types of waves. Um, but a scientist in the 1800s uh, named Joseph Fourier said that any waveform, any periodic waveform can be broken down into a summation of sine waves. So what that means is that any sound can be broken down into um, a, a, a series of sine waves happening at different frequencies, happening uh, at different phases, different amplitudes, okay? Um, and the sine wave is the only wave that has one single fundamental frequency, okay? So I'm just going to give you a little demonstration of what I mean by that, okay? So I, I just have Ableton open right now, um, and I have a synthesizer massive, okay, that some of you may f be familiar with, okay? And then I just have a little spectrum analyzer here. So what I mean by um, a single fundamental frequency is that if I play a sine wave, you will only see one peak happening in this frequency spectrum. So, so this is a fr this is a uh, spectrum analyzer. Which, so this is just showing uh, what frequencies are playing between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Okay. So if I just play a note here. Okay, so you see that there's just a single peak that's actually happening at um, at that fundamental frequency. Okay, there aren't any other harmonics other than that peak. Now you see some of this happening. That's just because of the attack of the the, the actual attack of the note is actually causing it to show. But but when it's just the frequency, the, just the note itself is only playing at one single fundamental frequency. Okay, let's try another. Note. Okay, see, so that's just one single fundamental frequency. Okay, so let's look at a square wave for a second. So I have it on sine, I'm gonna switch it to square. I'm gonna play it. Okay, so, so you notice that you have kind of one big, one, one big peak here, and then you have a whole bunch of different harmonics that are happening, okay? So what a square wave is, is just, is just a summation of different, of different sine waves. There's an actual mathematical equation for a square wave where it adds just a summation of sine waves that are happening at different frequencies, okay? So, um, so, so what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is that um, the sine wave is really important to understand because any sound that we have can be broken down into an infinite summation of sine waves, okay? Another thing that the scientist Fourier came up with was what some of you may have heard of. It's called the Fourier transform, okay? And what that does, uh, this may be a little bit wordy for some of you that are just getting started out in um, digital signal processing, but what it, what it basically means is that we can take a function that's happening in time Okay, a sound that's happening in time. And then what we can do is we can mathematically calculate it back and find out the frequencies, the different sine waves that are actually contained at a certain instant in that time. So when I'm when I'm playing this note, okay, it's actually taking that note and at that at each instant it's actually breaking it down into what the summation of sine waves at that particular time are, okay? So if we looked at a saw wave, okay? Okay, so that's, that's actually showing us the summation of different sine waves that are creating that, that particular sound, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put Ableton away. So we're gonna move over here to processing and we're just gonna talk about a few of the kind of fundamental parts of a waveform or of a sine wave. Okay. Now, one thing that I should state is that this um, this tutorial that I'm uh, giving you is a very very watered down version of 
you know, the different properties of a sine wave and, you know, just the different, the, the, the different kind of properties that I could talk to you about f with a wave. I mean, I could probably, if I gathered enough material, I could probably speak to you about <laughs> an hour for, uh, uh, about these, um, you know, about the sine wave itself. Um, but I just wanted to give you kind of an introduction, um, to, to the sine wave. So I don't scare you off with mathematical functions, so on and so forth. Okay, so I've just drawn up this quick little sketch. Don't worry about the code, okay? I'll just put this away. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what actually makes up a wave, okay? And some different things that we can talk about when we're talking about a wave because for the next tutorial, I wanted to start possibly doing an oscillator, building an oscillator, which is a waveform generator, okay? And in order to do that, I just need to make you aware of some of these different things, um, some of the different kind of lingo that we talk about when we're talking about waveforms, okay? So what we see is we see a wave, okay? So this is just a sine wave, okay? Now, on the x-axis, we have time. So just picture this as like a sound. Maybe it could be my voice. Um, and it's actually happening through time. Okay, now on the y-axis, I have these numbers, 1 and minus 1, okay? And then you have values that are happening between, between, these, uh, between these numbers, between 1 and minus 1, okay? And as I've said to you before, those numbers are just referring, those are, those are actual directions to the speaker about where the speaker cone needs to be between plus one and minus one at a particular moment in time. Okay. So we have this quality of a waveform and we call it the amplitude. Okay. Now, a lot of people would say amplitude and they would equate that to volume. Okay. And that's not exactly the same thing. Okay. Can be kind of a similar thing, but I would, I would think of ampl amplitude more as just where the speaker needs to be at one particular moment in time, okay? Now, when you think about volume, volume can be affected by a lot of external factors, okay? What kind of room that you're in, how far you are from the sound source you are, so on and so forth, okay? Can affect how loud or how soft a signal can be, okay? So don't confuse those things with each other. Okay, now we have this, um, this other term called a period, okay? Now, when I say period, I want you to think how long does it take for one cycle to complete, okay? So a cycle is just, okay, the waveform starts. Now, we can assume that if this were, that if, that if our picture were bigger, that this waveform would continue in this same fashion if we were, um, if we were to continue this, uh, if we were to extend the timeline out, okay? So, so just picture this repeating, okay? Now, a period just means how long does it take for this cycle to complete before it starts again and, and does the same thing over again, okay? That's the period, okay? Now, then we have the frequency, okay? And what that means is how many cycles does it take to complete in one space of time, okay? So if we were to, if we were to take this picture here, we would say that this has a frequency of one, okay? So we have a space of time and it's only completed one time. Now let's say that it, that it did this 20 times in one, in one period, okay, then the frequency would be 20, okay? So when we're talking about sound, a lot of times we're talking about sound in seconds, okay? So, um, so if you think about the human range of hearing, you have 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz is the human range of hearing. So 20, so 20 hertz or 20, 20 cycles in a second is the lowest that the lowest that we were able to hear in our human range of hearing all the way up to 20,000 
well, I can't hear that high. <laughs> most of us can't, but the highest range of human hearing for most people is 20,000 hertz. And um, so that would mean that that sound is happening 20,000 times in one second. Okay. So, uh, so that's it for this lesson. Uh, that, like I said, this is a watered down version of uh, the kind of anatomy of a sine wave. And uh, this is useful not only for uh, audio, but also if you were doing any sort of games programming, um, got to know about the sine wave. Of course, the sine wave is also a trigon uh, tri trigonometric function. Okay. And um, so that means that you could take that fun you could take the value as um uh as as a signal is going around the circle i don't want to get into all that but what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say to you is that there are a lot of different ways that this can be broken down and that um if you if you would like to know more what i'll do is i'll post uh, a couple other videos that have some really fantastic explanations and graphics and so on and so forth that could really go in depth as far as, um, you know, different ways that you can think about the sine wave and its uses. So for the next lesson, I, I think I'm going to get into uh, audio a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually start looking at building an oscillator. Now, an oscillator is just a waveform generator, okay? It just generates different types of waveforms. If we had it in the analog world, like if I had an actual physical oscillator with me, it would be just an electrical voltage, okay? But uh, in a computer, it's a simulation of that. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave feedback, any questions, so on and so forth below, and I'll see you next time.